The Sega Saturn is the greatest multiplayer games console in the world. And that is the greatest and not was because it's never been bettered. Mario Kart 64 is four player fun, but it's weak source when compared to Saturn's 10 player mayhem. And sure, you can have 16 players at a Halo LAN party, but look at all this shit. Ain't nobody got time for that. So I'm gonna show you the best five Sega Saturn multiplayer games. I know these are the best because back in the 90s, I had a lot of Saturn games and these were the five that got picked by my friends group more often than any others. So there, science. Being English, of course a football game was going to get pulled out more often than Jimmy Savile's Danger Rod at a BBC studio. It might look like proper jank now, but that's because it is. It's got some of the most dumbass passing mechanics and the player AI that swings between Beckham and Window Licker like a fucking pendulum. But it's so much fun to play and the jank just adds to the fun because everyone suffers the jank equally. And yes, technically, one of Victory Gold's sequels like Sega Worldwide Soccer 98 on the Sega Saturn is a mechanically a far superior game, but without the mongoloid AI, you lose a lot of the jeopardy that makes this game fun. And not just that, the goal announcer. Goal! And the batshit crazy celebration animations. All this ties this package of chaos together. The amounts of England versus Spain rounds I've played over the years with friends have turned the fictitious England forward Bagley into a legend. Also, victory goal doesn't just have to be a one-on-one -on -one affair. No, up to four players can witness Bagley score goal after goal in glorious couch multiplayer sessions. You need a classic winner stays on game during any good multiplayer session and Street Fighter Alpha 2 fills that gap quicker than a fat person on the underground. I'm saying Street Fighter Alpha 2 because that's the version I had in the 90s, but we're in the future now and you can just download the ROM, I mean import the disc of Street Fighter Zero 2 Dash, which is the best version of this game on the console. Why this one and not Street Fighter Zero 3? Well, you don't need the extra 4 meg cartridge to play and there are far less nonsense options. In a winner stays on session, you don't want to have to stop everything just to try and explain Xism, Vism and Jism when you're already 4 beers in. Street Fighter Alpha 1 has only about 4 characters in it and something like X-Men vs Street Fighter just gets too chaotic for your casual player. Street Fighter Alpha 2 is the perfect middle ground to get a decent length winner stays on session going before it turns out one person is just better than everyone else, doesn't lose and you end up playing something else. Athlete Kings or Decathlete, if you don't want the shitty 50 Hertz version, is the premium button masher on the Saturn. Actually, not just the Saturn, because it's the best athletics game ever made. Strong stuff, but he's right. The OG track and field is still fun, but some events like Hammer can just fuck off. The PS1 track and field game is good as well, but Decathlete looks and plays better. Although track and field on the PlayStation is four players, where the Saturn game is technically only two, there is a workaround. You have two teams of two and you just alternate each event with each other. Then when it comes to putting your name in, just make it a combination of both players' names. So Brad and Steve becomes B.S. This is the simple, elegant solution we came up with back in the 90s. And unlike every other track and field game, you don't have to explain the controls to new players as the game does it for you before each event. So the whole thing becomes a simple, addictive, multiplayer fun that has better graphics and gameplay than the other games like it. I'm inclined to agree with you, dodgy kebab. It's just a shame that every time Sega tried to make a button mashing athletics game after this, it turned out to be complete toiler. There was Winter Heat also on the Saturn, which is the direct sequel to Decathlete. It's just not as good. Then we had Virtua Athlete 2K on the Dreamcast, 
which was all right, but kind of bland. Then we finally had the Catholic collection on the PS2, which I'm pretty sure was just an elaborate troll by someone at Sega, which got so out of hand, it accidentally got released. So if you saw this game in a shop, you'd assume that this was a remaster of the Saturn game, right? I mean, it's in the Sega Ages 2500 range, the same as Virtua Racing Flat Out, which was a fantastic remake. No, what these bastards did was a slight reskin of Virtua Athlete, then laugh as you handed over money for a big box of fuck who else. Right, now we're into the top tier of multiplayer Saturn games. Now you may ask, what is so special about Bomberman? After all, you can get a version of this game with varying degrees of quality on many different systems. Well, apart from the improved presentation, superior graphics and great sound that the Saturn version has over every other version, slapping a multi-tap, six pads and round up five other people and you have yourself a six player Bomberman battle. But wait, there's more. Now a six player Bomberman game is great, I mean on the Saturn version you have different levels you can play on, each with different film mechanics, and you have the rideable dinosaurs which are all called Louie, but if you really want to get the most out of this version, then slap in a second multi-tap and another four pads for a rather messy ten player game of Bomberman. During a 10 player game, the Saturn will switch into high resolution mode and you'll get to play on the wide mode field. Now, this mode is brilliant fun and I totally recommend it, but there are two pitfalls which I need to warn you about. The first is the rather obvious shitty controller issue. When you collect enough Saturn controllers to be able to set up a 10 player game, there is a large chance that one of these controllers is going to have screwed up buttons or even worse, one of these third party monstrosities. There will always be an argument over who has had the shit controller and when that person loses it will definitely be because they have the worst pad. The second major pitfall is a huge design flaw in the game's character selection screen. Anyone can unselect other people's characters at any time by pressing B. That's right, during the player character selection process everyone's controller is active at the same time time so everyone has control over the menus and selections all of the time and when everyone finds this out just trying to get a game started becomes a fucking nightmare you have all the menus done you get right to the last person selecting their character and then some prick hammers the b button unselects everything and you have to begin the whole selection process from the start if it wasn't for this utter rage inducing design problem this game would be top of the list, because I speak from a position of experience here. There were times back in the day when me and nine other people tried for almost an hour to get this game started and it would just turn into prick roulette, where it would seem that each person would take turns in not allowing the game to begin. Now before I reveal the number one multiplayer Saturn game, I want to give a few honourable mentions to other great multiplayer games, but ones that didn't get picked over the five main here when me and my friends used to play Saturn all the time in the 90s. In the spirit of multiplayer games, let's hear from some other people. Sega Rally. Now there's a bloody good game. It was the best racing title on the system by a country mile and fucking light years ahead of the Daytona USA conversion. Playing split screen on this one was an absolute blast and if you had the plus edition of Sega Rally you could even play online. Not that anyone in the UK actually had a Saturn modem, the bastards at Sega didn't invite us to that party. <sighs> you only need to hear about Guardian Heroes to understand how it was a recipe for success. Take Treasure, the much-loved Japanese studio that was formed by a group of developers who had left Konami. Add in the Sega Saturn with its 2D sprite-pushing capabilities. Throw in a Saturn multi-tap, marinade in a scrolling beat-em-up sauce, and you've got yourself something rather special indeed. The six-player action game with RPG elements was so special, if you want to pick up a Western copy of this game now, 
you'd better expect to take an eBay shafting for it. There is one game that Saturn veterans from the 90s will know above all else. <laughs> This is Death Tank, part action, part strategy, all awesome. You are all on the screen at the same time and you have to blast each other until there's only one of you left standing. If you were playing DOS based PC games back in 1991, you may have played Scorched Earth, which Death Tank is based upon. But where that was a turn based game, Death Tank has five of you all plugged into a Saturn multi-tap and going at it all at once. You control one of these little tanks which can move left or right with the shoulder buttons. You can go up little mounds but not really steep hills. The arrow above you shows your trajectory of your shot and you control this with the d-pad. Pressing left or right will change the angle of the shot and up and down will change the distance of the shot. By default you have a gun that you can shoot but it has a few seconds cooldown time which is denoted by the arrow being red then changing to green when it's ready again. Earn money by blowing up your friends and then after each round you can use that money to buy other weapons or even things like jump jets so you can fly. The only catch is you can't just go out and buy a death tank. It's a hidden unlockable in June Nukem, but to unlock it, you need one of two other games. You would need June Nukem and either Quake or Exhumed, which is called Power Slave in America. If you have a game save of either Quake or Exhumed on your Saturn's internal memory, when you load up June Nukem, a new option called Death Tank will appear. Once you and four of your mates have sat down and played this together, you'll not give a fuck about June Nukem ever again. Yes, the graphics are super basic, but the gameplay is so good. I find it frankly unbelievable that no one's ever tried to replicate this type of game again on a console. Any studio could whip this up in just a couple of weeks with full online support, slap it out for a fiver, and still win best game award at the Jeffs at the end of the year. Right, you've had your fun, now get out of it. Video ni comment o nokoste, ii ne, botan wo oshi, tomodachi ni sumete kara, ドジケバブを購読してください。